Since the days before records were kept, humans have been deeply affected by music. Over time it has taken many forms and has been integrated into many different kinds of media and entertainment in order to have a more emotional impact on its audience. Whether it be theater, film, or TV. For a while, this was the extent of music's reach into multimedia content, that is, until the advent of the video game. Video games provided another platform for music to have an impact on people. And whether or not you realize it, you too have been affected by video game music. Although video game music has been around for a short period of time, there are plenty of examples of video game music embedded in pop culture. Oftentimes, these games can reach people who have never even picked up a controller. For example, for us growing up in the 2000s, I'd be willing to bet that a wave of nostalgia hits when you hear this next clip of background music. That's just the thing though, video game music can't be boiled down to just nostalgia. As Matt Ombler points out in his 2018 article, Bigger Than MTV, how video games are helping the music industry thrive from The Guardian, many people with no prior interest in music have actually attended clubs and gone to concerts to hear more video game music performed live. So clearly people are affected by it. But video game music doesn't have the advantage of being tightly controlled by cues on stage or on screen. So how does it work? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm Luke. And I'm Connor. And today we're going to talk a little bit about how video game music is made. And what kind of impact it has on both people and culture. In Paul Bennett's 2020 BBC podcast entitled Bleep 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 Music and Video Games, he expands on the idea that composers for video games have a unique struggle when creating their music. These composers need to be creative enough to produce atmosphere while also not drawing attention away from the game or being annoying. This practice is called adaptive music, and it attempts to capture the mood of the player's actions. Patrick Hutchings and John McCormack dive deep into this style of music in their 2020 article, Adaptive Music Composition for Games. In this paper, they explain that composers intentionally write music for different areas to give the player a greater sense of emotional engagement. For example, they might want to write a piece of music with drums and brass for a combat setting. But for something calmer and more storytelling focused, they might write something with more piano and strings. At the same time, in Azekaila Redfire's 2022 article called How I Started Making Music for Indie Games, understanding the concept of the game is important for making the music center around the game. For example, if you have a cute farm simming game like Stardew Valley, you might not want to have hard rock music in it, though that would be pretty fun. In any case, this is the key to making the video game art form what it is. For instance, in a media psychology article from 2019 entitled Effects of Soundtrack Music on the Video Game Experience, players cited that when music was present, they were much more likely to be emotionally invested and mentally transported than when it wasn't. According to a 2023 BBC Bite Size article entitled Composing Music for Video Games, there are three main components that composers keep in mind. Light motifs, adaptive music, and incidental music. Light motifs are pieces of music that represent characters, ideas, and places that the composer thinks is an important reoccurring element. They're helpful for forming emotional connection and are the most prevalent type of music. Adaptive music needs to stay fresh and adaptive by layering over itself to keep the player invested. It needs to be able to change and morph to fit the context of the plot and the character. 
Finally, there is incidental music. Often fairly minimal, but incidental music is used to blend in. It's not meant to stand out, and it's there to serve as a base layer for the player's atmosphere. There are many game genres that contain a variety of captivating music, but some of the best music has come from open world games. These games allow the player to take full control of the story and explore the vast open world and all the possibilities it has to offer. A great example of this is the Legend of Zelda series. Whether it's creating more energy during combat or filling a calm environment with bliss, this series does an amazing job at establishing tone and getting the player to emotionally invest. Another great example of open world games is Minecraft. Music in this game is simple yet compelling, and with it being one of the most widely played video games in the world, the music often provides a sense of nostalgia, but also excitement for many, many players. Music in gaming helps create a narrative, and some of my favorite games specifically come from single-player storytelling games. These are games that revolve around one character and pick up in intensity of the gameplay as you progress through the game. One game that stands out with its soundtrack is Cuphead. This game takes place in the 1930s, so everything about the game is revolved around that. The characters, the animation, and of course, the music. The music in this game is very energetic, and it has elements of jazz in order to have the player feel like they're almost a part of the world. A great Now there are games like Cuphead that have a very lively story, but on the other end there are games that have a more dark story, like one of my other favorite games, Hollow Knight. In this world, you are meant to explore ruined cities and wastelands in order to discover the truth behind this plague. Though Cuphead uses jazz music for both in battle and walking around different levels, Hollow Knight uses more classical music, which creates more of a somber tone. Some games are able to blend genius storytelling with the grandiose scale and nature of open world games, and also incorporate elements of the highly resonant music from film and theater. I am specifically referring to the Halo franchise. The grim, dark setting being patrolled by alien spaceships while Martin O'Donnell's main Gregorian chant played over the desolate landscape filled me with excitement and awe that I had never felt before, and I knew that I had to play this game. One level in particular that showcases Halo's dedication to good music is the Warthog run at the end of Halo 3. During the level, you and your enemy turned friend have to escape a rapidly deteriorating landscape that is full of zombie-like parasites. With the thunderous drums and the full orchestra behind you so close to the end of the story, it puts the player directly in the driver's seat. No pun intended. 
and genuinely makes it feel like every second counts. If that doesn't encapsulate what it means for video game music to impact the player, I don't know what does. Certain games like Among Us, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Rocket League can achieve similar societal effects with their lack of music. But we would argue that those games achieve their greatness by subverting an audience's expectations of a finely tuned musical score. While it's definitely not the sole element that makes video games the fun and impactful medium that they are, they do provide a certain artistic fingerprint that allows players to identify with them. Music composition plays an immensely important role in the impact that video games have on both their audience and pop culture. We know from our experience that engaging in video game music is one of the most impactful aspects of the art form, and we hope that after watching this video, you too will listen a little closer the next time you play a video game. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we hope you enjoyed. Bye! Bye.